Hello and welcome to another edition of Local Yoko. Here's a flower update. These kind of look like fireworks, but at ground level kind of thing. And I planted those for free. I saved the bulbs from the year before. But, uh, yeah, well, a tropical storm was the big to-do going on. And what a mess that is. Uh, so that was the Weather Channel 24-7 coverage. Thankfully, we don't have to deal with hurricanes per se like they do down there. But look at the uh, weather map. It looks almost like a rainbow. What's up with that? There's like the weather got all woke on us or diverse or something or rainbow. Go jump in a lake. My dad, when he was upset, he would tell my mom that sometimes. And it was like that was the phrase she used back there. But somebody turned it into a sticker, and I think that's great. Yeah, to me, I would take that as a compliment now. Go jump in a lake. Michigan's known for that. Hey, I found out I'm from Slovakia. My grandparents on my dad's side are from Slovakia. So that was just, I found that out just this summer, a few weeks ago. My sisters went on a trip. I'll have to show you the map. Anyways, uh, this, this is going to be an open book kind of a show type thing. Um, there's a peace rally out front. I'm going to take the shortcut. But first, the Detroit Institute of Arts. Now, they've displayed art here, there, and everywhere, and it's nice to have this. So there's all sorts of symbols. I'm not sure what all that means, but there's a, a thing here you can read. It's a movement number 27. Here, <laughs> take note, no vaping, subject to a 30-day ban. Woo-wee. But here we have a nice library in Dearborn. I live in Dearborn Heights, technically, but I still... Dearborn was my hometown. I was uh, raised in uh, Dearborn kind of thing. So Dearborn Heights is close enough. You know, we're kind of joined at the hip. But, uh, yeah, they have a uh, – this is great. Finally, you know, October 7th happened, but it's taken – I've seen a couple of rallies, but this should be an ongoing thing like week to week, uh, a protest as far as what's happening in Palestine. And the same for what's happening in Ukraine, too. But uh, we'll, we're going to go through the branches of the military while we're here. So we're going to start with the Department of the Navy. Honor, courage, commitment. Uh, they were advertising out front. That's the Palestinian flag. They said 5.30 it starts. But, and I got here shortly thereafter. But it really started around 6.00. So I was here a little early. So we'll take a look at the glass house. They need to trim the vines or whatever, some landscaping work they need to do up there. But they have this nice uh, historical placard kind of thing. There's the glass house, and it's timeless. What a gorgeous building. Uh, and then they talk about the Ford Rotunda. And I, I vaguely, I don't I was born in 1960. I'm not sure exactly when that burned. Uh, but, man, that would be cool if that building was still around. Classic. Well, the si this is the guy that built our city kind of a thing and certainly promoted the area, put Dearborn on the map and, and Detroit as well. So this was done up in 1975 made possible through yeah so that's nice but we're still waiting for the uh, the start here here's the Coast Guard 1790 they started up um, Semper Paratus that's Latin I presume for always prepared so they got the sound system going here there's the stage uh, they're getting ready, I guess, waiting for everybody to make it here. There'll, there'll be several speakers. 
Now, here are the Marines. They're also part of the Navy. Okay, Semper Fidelis, always faithful. So I know a little Latin. See their Department of the Navy, but then United States Marine Corps. So it's either a branch, it's probably its own separate entity, but it's still part like of the Navy. Here they combine Lebanon and the Palestinian flag. All right, so here's another sign to point you where you got to go. So you do want to turn to the right here because that's where everything is. The police are just down yonder. They got the nice gold badge. The Performing Arts Center is a little bit further down. But, yeah, this is nice, a rally. This is a good place to have a rally or a peace march or something right in front of the library. There's places where you can sit. There's trees, a nice green space. You got good cloud action. My evil twins always looked at this and said, hey, that, that would make a nice Christmas tree, but it's right next to the police department. So yeah, don't even think about it. But here, yeah, a nice memorial for people that have passed before us to, uh, for our freedom. Here it says, uh, if you can read along, all gave some, some gave all. Well. Yeah, we, uh, we're we free because uh, we've had people to, to, to fight for our freedom. All right, continuing with the, uh, this is backwards here. I should have gotten from the front. But uh, the Army, 1775, this will defend. Yeah, we almost had an insurrection Whew, a few years back. An overthrow of our government, a coup. Al almost pulled it off. Holy crap, but yeah, thankfully, you know, maybe our military will keep us safe and whatnot. Keep your fingers crossed. Uh, that's the sound system. They were playing the music. In fact, you can have this show with no voiceover commentary on my, my behalf if you go to the YouTube site. And I have Peace Rally. Here they have the signs and the occupation now. I couldn't agree more. There should be a Palestinian, they always say state, but I, I say country. Israel's a country. Palestine could be a, a country now. Or is it a state like Michigan's a state? I don't know. They got the Golan Heights, the West Bank. You almost have to be like some historical expert to understand everything that's going in the middle, going down in the Middle East. They make it so complicated. But it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, just look up at the clouds. That's much better. Okay, 6 o'clock. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, take the voiceover off, and we'll listen to the whole speech. We're, I'm going to do this quick. Okay. Your kid and you want to come up here and do it come on come on does he know what he's doing does he does he know what he's doing all right good right here Go ahead. hi guys this is me amir and i'm palestinian all right. if you guys all know if you guys want to all know that uh, free free palestine free free palestine palestine Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Thanks, Amir. Great job. Good job, Amir. I am uh, the president of an organization called New Generation for Palestine. I'm also a member of the Arab American Political Action Committee and uh, a board member of the ACRL, the Arab American Civil Rights League. I want to thank you all for coming out here today on short notice. I know it's hot, and so I thank you all for being out here today, and we're all here as one people, as one people, as Arabs all together. We are one people from all the Arab countries. They try to separate us, and they don't understand since October 7th, but even before, that we are one big Arab family, all of us together. 
And we are all going to be fighting for justice, whether it is in Palestine, in Lebanon, in Yemen, in Iraq, in Syria, all throughout the Arab world. We are going to stand as one people, and they are going to hear our voices from now to November and beyond November from right here in Dearborn, the Arab American capital. Are you all with me? That's right. And so we are going to make sure that we are standing up for justice every single day. And they might think we might get tricked. Hi, hi, honey. Okay, let's be careful. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Is that your sister? Okay, come on. Happy. What's her name? Nadia. Nadia. Oh, she doesn't care. Okay, good. They are trying to demonize us. That has been the game since October 7th, when our president comes out and says and lies about us, says he saw beheaded babies when he didn't. When he says that we were lying about how many of us were dying in Gaza. They have created these situations and treated us like less than human beings and fostered an environment of dehumanization that got a six-year-old boy in Chicago stabbed 26 times to death in October, that got three young men shot for wearing a keffiyeh in November in New Hampshire, and another young man attacked in Austin, Texas in February. And these things keep happening. And all we hear is about the safety of people on the other side, and they never talk about the safety of our people and our children. And so we need to keep our voices loud. And they will keep killing us and keep trying to genocide us. It's not just Palestine. They will come after us everywhere, and so we have to make sure we keep our voices loud. And so that's why we're here today, to say hands off our lands, hands off this policy that has tried to break us. Everything that they have done is to try to break the Arab spirit and the Palestinian spirit. Whether it's assassinating our leaders, raping our prisoners and our hostages. They are defending the rapists. Of, they are having conversations in their, com in their society about defending and turning into heroes the rapists of our hostages. This is the people together today is the Dearborn Community Council. We also have the AHRC, the American Human Rights Council, the Arab American News, Project 1948, AMPAC, ACRL, NGP, Doctors Against Genocide, ADC, APAC, that's the good APAC, and the Michigan Task Force for Palestine. All these groups in the community came together from all backgrounds to come together as one people. And we might be a modest group of people today, but we know that we all speak for our whole community when we're out here. So first of all, we're going to have a few speakers today talking about this. Uh, we'll ask each of our speakers to keep it uh, to the point as it's hot out here. So let me please welcome first from Doctors Against Genocide. Please help me welcome our brother, Dr. Ala Ali. Palestine. Thank you all for coming and may Allah bless you all and bless us all for what we're doing. I have a message from my family in Gaza. I just wanted to brief, you know, uh, briefly tell you about my family. We, we have a large, big family in Gaza. And since the beginning of the genocide, the first one to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was my brother Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. And after him, 128 members of our family were killed. Since the war, since the genocide started, I've been calling them, convincing them, I will pay the Egyptians government to get you out. Let's get, get out of there, at least till the genocide is ending. And they said, no. If we leave, we are betraying our deen. We are betraying our land. We are betraying our ummah. They are doing, they feel the obligation that we have towards our people in Gaza, in Lebanon, in Yemen, in Sudan, all over the Middle East. Do you think if they succeed in the genocide in Gaza, they will stop there? They will not. They will go to Lebanon. And after finishing Lebanon, and everybody else is silenced, they will go to Syria, to Iraq, to Yemen. This is their plan. We will have to have a plan. Our plan is from now on, 
Palestinian, Yemeni, or Lebanese. We are brothers against genocide. In the past few weeks, we have been approached by Kamala Harris campaign and by Trump's campaign. They are trying to gain our votes. They are trying to gain our trust. We told them that we will not give you our votes till you show us on, on the underground what you're gonna be doing. Those people, the oppression that everybody is feeling in the Middle East will not just go and vote, will knock on every door next to him and take them by hand to the polls tomorrow to vote. We will show them that we have numbers, we have votes, we can change everything around. They know that the next president in the United States is coming from Dearborn. We have to be strong because we are strong. All what we have to do is to go out to our neighbors, to our friends, go, call them, take them by hand, and vote. It doesn't matter who you vote for. As long as you show them that we are here, our vote counts, this is what will scare them. Reach us in any organization and we will see what is your talent and we'll scale together. God bless our, our countries overseas. God bless Palestine, Lebanon, Yemen, and Iraq and all our countries and God bless you all and have a great day. Let's try this a little bit. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine. Louder. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine. One of the most beautiful things about our rallies here is that we always have a diverse group of people. I know today we have our Lebanese brothers and sisters here with us. We have our Yemeni brothers and sisters, our Iraqi brothers and sisters, our Palestinian brothers and sisters, Syrian, everywhere from all over the Arab world. And we have other people too. And we also, let's not forget, whenever we have a rally in Dearborn, we don't forget to uh, welcome our uninvited guests from the CIA and FBI that are here as well. <laughs> welcome. We have nothing to hide. We are not ashamed that we stand here. There are no words that you can use against us that scare us anymore. They want to come and call Dearborn the jihad capital. They want to call us all terrorist sympathizers. We don't care anymore. We are here standing up for justice and standing up for our people. And there is no way they will scare us anymore. No way they will scare us anymore. They try to make us ashamed of saying from the river to the sea. Are we ashamed? No. Are we ashamed? No. Let's try it once. From the river to the sea? We are not afraid to say what we mean. And maybe they, they say when we say it, we're being genocidal. That's not true. We mean free for everybody. But maybe they think when we say it is genocidal because when they say it, it is genocidal. Just today, Smote Rich got on the news and said maybe it would be the moral thing to starve to death the two million Palestinians in Gaza. Oh, this is not somebody who is just some crazy Israeli. He is a crazy Israeli, but he also happens to be a member of the government getting out there and saying these things. We are not the terrorists here. We know who is, and we know who are the genocidal maniacs in this thing. And so we are not afraid to keep standing up for what we believe and who we are. And so now I'd like to invite another member of our organizations up here. I'll get her up. I'll, I'll keep talking so when she gets up here it's very quickly. But a strong woman in our community, someone who has been at the forefront since October 7th of fighting for our civil rights through the Arab American Civil Rights League. Please help me welcome the executive director of the ACRL, ACRL our sister, Maryam Sharara. And in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Palestine, Yemen, Lebanon, Syria, and Iraq. We're here to denounce the atrocities committed against innocent civilians and to call for an end to the violence and suffering that have plagued these regions for far too long. Innocent lives are being lost, families are being torn apart, and communities are being shattered. This is not just an Arab issue, it is a human issue. Every life lost, every child orphaned, and every home destroyed is a tragedy that affects us all regardless of where we come from or what we believe. 
We must stand united, no matter our walk of life, to condemn these acts of violence and demand accountability. The targeting and killing of innocent civilians is unacceptable and must be stopped. We must raise our voices against the ongoing injustice and call for immediate action to protect human rights and uphold international law. Our literal last bit of hope is our voice. Yet our voices haven't been loud enough because just a few weeks ago, a documented war criminal, Netanyahu, who has a pending arrest warrant issued by the International Criminal Court, was invited to our country, welcomed with open arms, and received a standing ovation from our elected officials. This man stood before the American people and mocked us to our faces. The elected officials we put in office who swore an oath to put us first gave that man a standing ovation. This is a complete mockery of America and our values and a gross negligence of the Constitution of the United States. Today, we call for an end to the bombings, the blockades, and the brutal attacks. We call for humanitarian aid to reach those in need and the international com community to take a stand against the oppression and violence inflicted upon our communities. They're trying to keep us quiet by portraying this false narrative, but we won't allow that to happen. Our strength lies in our unity. We must come together across all divides to advocate for peace and justice. Let us be a voice for the voiceless and hope for the hopeless and light in the darkness. In addition to standing together today, I urge each and every one of you to promote peace in the Middle East. Write letters, make phone calls, and use your social media platform to spread awareness and call for justice. Our collective voices can make a powerful impact, but it requires each of us to take an active role in the fight for human rights and dignity. It is our duty to speak the truth and stand behind our ummah, our people, and our fight for justice and dignity. And let us remember that our fight is not just for those in our ancestors' homeland, but for all people around the world who suffer under the weight of injustice and violence. Together we can build a future where every person, regardless of their nationality or religion, can live in peace and dignity. Thank you. Another part of the diversity we always bring here, our brother Jamil Rishmawi from Beit Sahur, one of the oldest Palestinian Christian villages in the world, who, who was wounded and shot and imprisoned by the Israelis when he lived in Palestine, and now he's here to till, still tell those stories and be someone who is always standing up for Palestine with his family. And we have that beautiful diversity with us in Palestine and always here at our rallies here in Dearborn has always made sure that our Arab American voice has been heard. And since 1985, 85, 84, 84, sorry, since 1984, every week has published the, the widest spread Arab American newspaper and every week since 1984, not just since October 7th, has had a column and a feature about Palestine because he knows that Palestine is in the heartbeat of every Arab throughout the world and every Arab American here in Dearborn. So the founder and publisher of the Arab American News, our brother Osama Siblani. I was trying to imitate Joe Biden. Assalamu alaikum. First, let me to each and every one of you who came. I know you're looking around and you say, well, this is the largest community outside the Middle East, and what the heck is going on? Well, <clears throat> some are overseas, and some have become lazy. They have become callous. And I understand, but there is one thing that is not happening. The people who are fighting are still standing and they are still fighting and they are still making a difference. And that where once we become lazy and give up, then we will start to lose. That should not have happened in Dearborn, my brothers and sisters. 
on the eve of one of the most important election in our time, which is tomorrow. We can scream and we can yell this. We need to make sure that our friends, the people who are good for our community and our country, the United States of America, win. Not those who are the best politicians that money can buy. Are we going to do it? Are we going to do it? If each one of us bring 100 to vote, we can win the election hands down. I can tell you that. So, let me tell you about something. Every time I appear on, on a television station overseas and speak in Arabic, there is an organization called MIBRI, Middle East Media Research Institute. This is the same institute that the executive editor wrote his infamous opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal about Dearborn and called it a jihadist city. So every time I appear on Arabic television, they take my statements and they translate in English. And they broadcast it and put it on video and put it on YouTube. So I want to take this opportunity to say to them, thank you for doing so. I appreciate the effort of translating every word I say. So I am saying now, go to hell. There you can take with you Biden, another criminal that has dropped out because God can know how to punish. And they punished him. You see, the first couple days in this, in this war, 10 months ago, I spoke, I say it 10 months from then, I say it now. The terrorist is Netanyahu and his government and Biden and his administration. If this is a crime, I am guilty as charged. Come and pick me up, 5706 Chase Road. We cannot remain silent when we see our children being ripped apart in, the, in, 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 in Gaza. I sit and watch television, and I see young kids, 16 and 17 years old, running in the street and carrying, this is live, this is live footage carrying children that they're dripping blood and ripped in pieces. How do you think these people are gonna feel? How do you think these kids are gonna act when they grow up? Are they going to take a bunch of flowers and give it to the Israelis? Are they, are they going to sit home and say, yes, I will stay under occupation for another 76 years? They are going to say, the hell with you. I am willing to die as well in order to make us free. Yeah. So for those, for those, you don't need to translate me from Arabic to English. I'm speaking good English, right? So for those who are betting on us getting tired, or this, these people who are worried that we are not getting tired now, but we will be getting tired soon. And for those who believe that we are afraid to die, or afraid to go to jail, or afraid, or we're not gonna stand up later because we get lazy, you are betting on the wrong thing. We are going to continue to fight Stand up, speak up, until we become free and it becomes a Palada Palestine becomes free. And yes, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free.
Let's do it for him. From the river to the sea. That's not good enough. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. And we are here today. I went around and picked up the flags because we are here today as one people. I picked up. We are not ashamed to say that we stand with our Iraqi brothers and sisters that are fighting against occupation and apartheid. And they've been fighting against American occupation and apartheid since the first Gulf War. Through the terrible sanctions that they lived through. Through the million Iraqis that were killed based on a lie from our government. Massacred. And our government wants us to believe them. Killed based on a lie. And they have stood up. Civilizations destroyed by the American government. Where do you think the Israelis learned what they do from? We saw Abu Ghraib and now we see it again in Gaza. So we stand strongly with our Iraqi brothers and sisters. And we, yes, and we are not ashamed. And I say, I said it a lot and they, oops. I, I say it a lot and they always put me in trouble for it, but I don't care. We are not ashamed to say that we stand with our Lebanese brothers and sisters protecting the north of Palestine, protecting the south of Lebanon who are the barrier against this apartheid spreading throughout the rest of the Arab world. We are not ashamed to say the word Hezbollah. We are not ashamed to say that we stand very strongly with the Lebanese resistance. And if you want to understand the beautiful diversity of Arabs, understand that the, the voice of, the, the singing voice of the Lebanese Islamic resistance of Lebanon is a Lebanese Christian woman. That's how beautiful our culture is. That's how beautiful we will be. Whenever I see Lebanese girls in Dearborn named Julia, I know why. Maybe white people don't know why, but I know why. And so we are very happy to stay, stand strongly with our Lebanese brothers and sisters protecting. And finally, and last but definitely not least, our brothers who have put a little toll plaza in the Red Sea. Who, <laughs> I can guarantee you, I've been, I go to Palestine, I return to Palestine all the time, I'm going there next week. It's on the line too. And they have gone out, not just from their lands, but out into the seas to say that there will be a price for apartheid. There will be a price for genocide. And they do that because they are proud Arabs and because our Yemeni brothers and sisters are the original Arabs. The Arabs who have stood up for justice from the beginning of time. And so we are not ashamed to say that we stand with them every day of the week and they will keep fighting. We are all Palestinian and we all raise Palestinian flags all the time. Yes, we have these flags, but we don't believe in these fake lines that white people had a meeting 100 years ago and built them between us. We are all one people. And we are fighting for Palestine because it is an attack not only on Palestinians, but an attack on all Arabs. Remember, when Zionists march down the street, they don't say death to Palestinians. They say death to Arabs. They want all of us to go away. And they want all of us to be genocided and they will never get rid of us. They have tried everything for 75 years, for 100 years, and for years. And he has started Arabic language uh, groups to make sure our voice is always out there in the arts and in the progressive space. So please help me welcome our brother from right here in Dearborn, Wissam Sharafuddin. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. My name is Wissam Sharafuddin and I'm a member of your beautiful community. I'm very proud to be a member of this community that has been an inspiration for the whole world. I think our presence here today is to protect American values. There is nothing more American than what you are doing today. And don't let anyone make you think that you're doing anything un-American. America's values of the consent of the governed and the equality of mankind and the freedom and the right of people for self-determination have been a struggle that was paid for by thousands and thousands of American martyrs over the years. And when the government betrayed these values, 
People protested to correct path. People protested against the Korean War. And people protested against the Vietnam War. And these protesters are celebrated today as American heroes. And you protesting the American-Israeli genocide is going to be celebrated as American heroes in the future. Interest over American interest. 68% of Americans voted against the genocide. They voted with ceasefire in the first weeks of genocide. And 100 senators out of 100 voted against ceasefire. Who's representing the people and who is an employee of APAC? A Congress that has hundreds of representatives, only seven, voted for ceasefire while 68% and then became 72% of Americans voted for ceasefire. What kind of democracy we're living in? What we're doing here is an American duty to protect our democracy. APAC should be designated as a foreign agent because it works for the interests of another country. Yeah. There are no longer left and right. There are no longer Arab and non-Arab. There is no longer Jew, Muslim, Christian. There is no longer Shia, Sunnah. There is Zionists and there is anti-Zionists. The line has been drawn in the sand. And this is what we need to know when we go to the polls. We need to know what line we're drawing, what's our priority. There are many issues that we care about. But there is a red line and there is a priority issue, which is Palestine. And for any human being, this is not because of our loyalty, this has actually taught us. Gaza has taught us to stand for every humanitarian value. Yeah. I feel that I haven't done my duty during... The Zionism is anti-Semitic, and the first victims of Zionism are Jews. And so we stand here in solidarity with our Jewish brothers and sisters defending Judaism and defending Jews. A colonial settler project that was designated and designed by evangelical Zionists way back before even uh, Herzl even thought about the, the project, to read about the roots of Zionism. And it, and it is anti-Semitic in its, in its essence. Participating in every single rally, even rallies that did not invite her to speak, she still participated in the rally because she believed in the cause. And she got imprisoned in an encampment with students and went to jail overnight. What in the last ADC uh, survey that surveyed 43,000 Arab Americans, very strong survey, we need every single vote and we need to activate everyone around us. And by appearing here today, we're not pledging to be activists, we're pledging to bring a thousand persons with us to be activists too. Thank you. Thousand people in October in Har Plaza, and we're gonna have thousands more when the elections get closer. It's the summer now, but when there's only a small amount of people, I don't get discouraged because I know that each one of you is worth a hundred followers that you know that aren't here today. And you're gonna keep spreading the word. And I'm not worried at all, because I know that we are one people. I know that the most famous Palestinian of all time, he said that which you do to the least of my brethren, you do to me. And so we are all one people, and he didn't have a lot of followers before he died. And so we're gonna make sure that we keep this movement going, and we keep going forward as far as we can. And so last, I'm going to bring up one last speaker, a youth speaker, but before I do that, I would like any kids who would like to come up and be on the stage for this last speaker, come on up. Any kids, any kids want to come up? Any kids, come on. Someone who is representing our new generation because we know that we are all here because of our kids. We are all here because we remember little Wadir back in October, and we are here because we have to protect our kids at all costs. And that's why we stand up here today, because the freedom of Palestine is not just about the freedom of Arab kids today, it's about the freedom of Arab kids 100 years from now. And it's not just about the freedom of Arab kids in Palestine, it's about the freedom of Arab kids here in America and here in Dearborn too. Because we know that they target us, and we need them to know that all of us will put our life on the line in a second 
to protect one of our kids here in this community. And so we have to make sure that we're always letting everyone know that. And so this next speaker to close things out today, I'm very honored that she wrote some words for us here today. And so please help me welcome our young sister, Ayat Faraj. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Today we are here to show our support for the people of Lebanon, Palestine, Yemen, Syria, and Iraq. These countries are going through really rough times and it is important for us to stand by them. Right now, they are facing challenges that are impacting everyday lives in so many ways. Families are struggling and there's a lot of uncertainty about the future. As young people, we are, we are understanding the power of coming together and supporting one another, no matter how far apart we are. It's about empathy, compassion, and realizing that despite the distance, their pain and struggles are real to us too. By standing, By standing in solitary, we are showing that we care about what is happening. It's about letting people know that they are not alone and that we are paying attention. We may not have all the solutions, but we can offer hope and a sense of connection. We can raise our voices, share their stories, and advocate them for a better future. In these present times, it's more important than ever to be there for each other. Whether through awareness, donations, or simply sharing our support, every little bit counts. Let's use our voices and actions to support those in need and to stand up for a future where everyone can live in peace and dignity. Together, we can make a difference. Thank you. kids and for Ayat doing a great job up here. We'd like to thank the city of Dearborn for helping us put this together real quickly. Jenna Sound, I want you to all look at each other and look at the person next to you and tell them thank you for coming today. Say it again, say thank you for coming today. Now look at the person next to you and tell them I'm proud of you. Tell them again, I'm proud of you. Now look at the person and tell them in a loud voice, I love you. I love you. Because we are a people full of love and our love is going to take us to a free Palestine one day. Again, look at the person next to you and tell them, I love you. Because we are a people full of love. They lie and say that we are full of hate, but we are only full of love. And we are proud to be Arabs and proud to be one people all standing here together. Let's hear it again. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Yalla, bis salami. Everyone have a safe day. Everyone love each other, protect each other, and we'll see you all soon. And we are going to be on the beaches of Gaza one day. I promise you, all of us together. Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, this is a war memorial thing, and hopefully we don't add anything more to this forgotten war here. And then we have the Vietnam War, which was way too long, but it was outdone by the Iraq War. But... Yeah, this whole warmongering stuff is uh, outdated. In this day and age, we just got to grow beyond that stage. That, that's all nonsense, this whole conflict. And it's political, granted, sure. It's all about power and money, or you get the power and then you get the money kind of thing. 
This was interesting. Look, a Liberty Bell and donated from all places the McDonald's restaurant. Well, good on them. That's a pretty good to do. I love this curly cue as a kid. I haven't out, outgrown that. Good architecture is paramount. Adventure begins at your library. Yes. Good thing. And now this is new. Never had this as a kid, but you can do the pickup kind of thing, like after hours. So if you're handy dandy with that stuff. Uh, yeah, well, you were here in the Motor Capital. DET.com is the website. And I have a, a show with no voiceover on YouTube, so I can post that. And then you don't have to worry, because with my voiceover, it probably ruins it all, right? That's why sometimes it's just better to be quiet. I slept in real good, but in the middle of the night, I got up and just, you know, it's cooler outside and walk around. <laughs> There's a little, like, baby skunk in the front yard, and um, it didn't seem to be bothered by me at all. And I didn't want to get too much closer just in case you'd catch a whiff of all that. I didn't need it, none of that action. So, but yeah, wildlife in the city. Imagine that. Well, there's a bear on the porch too. So, yeah, and he's patriotic. Marty is. Marty's been great. Keeps an eye on things. Yeah, says hi to everyone in the neighborhood. All right, this is just an update. We had just over an inch of rain here um, on August 6th. Just wanted to see if the Ecorse Creek is still going to be okay. Other places got more rain than that, but uh, nonetheless, um, it's really it's about two inches, and it causes problems here at the Ecorse Creek at Hanover and Telegraph. But just for shits and giggles, I'll take a peek here. So, and I think the flow action is a problem that it would dam up that this, it, there's enough clearance now, but when it rains a lot, it could dam up, and I'm pretty sure that's part of the reason Hanover Street backs up. But we'll have to keep an eye on things. This is a work in progress, but the creek is a little high, but why you would put a creek in, in between two blocks is just insanity but that was not good urban planning but that's the way it was done back in the day and that creek just became massive all the water runoff from the streets that was built out all the way out to the airport and i know a, a little about this because my first six years of my life were on hanover street my dad says 24083 so that's this house here yeah and it would flood, and there would be a pond, and as a kid, it'd be like, wow, look at that. There's a lake in the middle of our street. How cool, and there'd be rowboats and all that happy stuff. Well, as a kid, you're thinking, oh, I, I let's see, I'm going to talk this. Okay, I'll do the voiceover uh, in real time here. This was a July issue. I picked this this magazine up here for free in the at the city hall, and so uh, this was just when Biden was uh, well, he was still staying in the race at this point, but we know that's changed. But I wanted to show you this picture here because they say like a picture is worth a thousand words, and. Um, just looking at this um, picture, it, that uh, I, I'm not too partial to this picture here. Uh, these are both authoritarians. They both know better than us, and they're dangerous. And I would put Putin in that category, too. And uh, I guess Putin's, uh, according to Trump, Putin's to... Uh, be credited with the hostage situation 
Uh, anyways, I wanted to find out if there was going to be some peace marches or rallies in regards to the crisis in uh, Palestine. So I, I checked it out. I knew of the magazine and uh, Osama, I got his business card, but I went to this address because that's the address that's in the magazine here. I saw it on one of these pages. Uh, but anyways, if you uh, ring the bell on the door, Osama will answer. And then uh, mobile phone and all that. So he's going to keep me updated, hopefully. I'm hoping on this. Updates on the next uh, rally or peace march or whatever to stop this nonsense that's happening in the Middle East. So keep me informed. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Well, that was, uh, yeah, that was the end of that tape. That was, uh, let's see, this is Wednesday morning. I normally do my editing on Monday, but with uh, homecoming and a few other things, uh, I was able to do this local Yoko show and did the voiceover here on uh, Wednesday morning, the 7th. But, um, yeah, that was an interesting uh, rally there. And I certainly, I'm, I'm opinionated and I could go through point by point and what I agree with and what I might have questions on. I'm not doing any fact checking, but... I'll tell you what, the whole thing with the in the Middle East is just, uh, I'm tired of it already. I've grown up with it, and nothing's changed. It just keeps going on and on and on, one conflict after another, and I'm just tired. That's one part of the world, but they're always fighting. I'm sorry, I'm just tired of all that. When I was a kid and was growing up with my sisters and all that, one of the things we got at Christmas, I think my sister A. Marie got it, but it was one of those etch-a-sketch things, and you can kind of draw and make a picture, and then when you want to just erase it, you kind of shake it, and it resets everything. And it's like, yeah, why don't we just do an etch-a-sketch thing with the Middle East and just, okay, yeah, I know there's a lot of history, and there's a lot of religion, and oh, God, yeah, and that, a lot of that is, is just unreal. It just depends where your belief system is, but yeah, there's there's no middle ground or anything. It's like fight to the end. I get all that, but yeah, if, if you were like growing up and you're a young kid, you would like to just forget about all that old history now. Let's just do that etch-a-sketch, and let's just say, okay, we're all people here. We're just going to live, raise families, you know, work a little bit, but certainly have fun. That's the part you want to do. Have fun. Enjoy life. So you got to work a little bit for that. But at the end of the day, enjoy time with your family. It doesn't matter what nationality or race or whatever. We're all like that. We like to enjoy the time with our family. Just chill. Whatever it is, have a beer, smoke one, whatever it is floats your boat whatever whatever in your little palace in your own little thing you do your own little fun i get all that so let's try to get that in the middle east and i could go on and on but you know what i want to talk about urban planning in dearborn and the detroit area i don't want to be just totally wrapped up in the middle east and in doing that everybody's pontificating about what to do in the middle east so let everybody kind of figure out what to do, you know. But, man, it, it just takes up way too much time, and it's just nonsense to be dealing with this stuff in the 21st century. Anyways, on a couple of sides, I went back, or I looked at the tape, and when I was watching it, I think I was called out as an uninvited guest for that rally. I didn't know you had to be invited and then I don't know if I was accused of CIA or FBI. I'm going to have to go back and look at that. But I think I was looked at straight in the eye into the camcorder like I'm an uninvited guest. And it's like, crap. You know, I live in Dearborn Heights, but I grew up in Dearborn. It's like I'm not invited in my own, like, city. 
The name of the show is Local Yoko, which is just a short term for like the village idiot. So I'm just running around with a camcorder and just showing you what's happening in Dearborn. But it's just one opinion. Your opinion means more than mine. But I can give you a different point of view and you can look at that and make your own judgment. But anyways, yeah, I think I w uh, uninvited guests in my own city. Wow. I've been doing this for 29 years, I guess. <laughs> wow. Wow. No respect. This is like a Rodney Dangerfield moment for me. Um, but uh, anyways, um, I got a whole bunch of things, but I, I just, I'm not musically inclined and I'm not lyrical, like write songs and all that kind of stuff. I don't have the first clue on anything with music. But I, I did the poetry thing a little bit as a younger kid or whatever. I always got a kick when things would rhyme. So anyways, I just, and I just thought of this and wrote it down and said, yeah, it kind of rhymes. And then I'm thinking, well, you know, you could make a song with the lyrics. You need like a catchy chorus or a catchphrase. And then people pick up on that. But you got to have a good song around it. You, but having a, a catchphrase or something that whatever espresso can't stop thinking about that song right so uh but anyway i digress but here uh, in the middle east there's always something like somebody did this and then it's a retaliation kind of thing so it's like they did this they did that and, you know you got that this and that thing and it's like uh, the next phrase would be uh, tit for this tit for that so yeah you do this to me screw you or go to hell or whatever I'm going to show you and one up you or whatever and yeah you'll never do that again and so you up the ante and there's a the tit for tat kind of a thing. That's an expression I googled it just this morning, and it, it's a English phrase or what, whatever. It's kind of interesting the history, but uh, and then the last part of this thing would be um, what the frickin' frack, and frickin' is just it's it's like a bad word kind of thing. But instead of saying the whole thing, people try to be coy about it and they say fricking instead of the the other word which upsets people and then frack and then that that kind of rhymes with everything so you know i mean this whole thing is re ridiculous with the war but so i i wrote just this and i wrote it down so i wouldn't forget but here it would go i'll just do it and i'm not like a poet and i'm not musically inclined but somebody with a guitar could start writing this out but they did this they did that tit for this tit for that what the freaking frack but you gotta yeah i'm gonna have to think a little bit more of this so it kind of rolls off the tongue a little bit but yeah but it's just ridiculous everybody's you know, it's the macho thing to do. You don't want to be shown up. If somebody's going to disrespect you or whatever, I'll, well, I'll show them. And I get all that. And this works not even with the war thing, too. But you could say this with relationship, men and women relationships. But men know after a while, if you're having a fight with your lady, you know, you might uh, win the war but lose the um, – or win the fight but lose the war or lose the battle in the end game you're you're no further ahead so um yeah so this works for a love relationship too so somebody can figure this out but it's just crazy i just can't believe in this day and age they say 40,000 people have died in palestine and they've pulverized the whole city Detroit is about the same square miles as um, as Palestine, and they Israel just pulverized it with U.S.-made bombs. I'm not happy about that, 
And sure enough, these people where they lost their parents or loved ones, they're not going to grow up and hand flowers to the Israeli people. They're going to have an axe to grind. So I get a lot of that. But anyways, folks, thanks for watching. That's going to do it. And uh, take care. Good night.